as a child. Uh, I think I also watched Star Trek, but I think it was really the idea of being able to fly in space uh, that actually was what drove me uh, to originally be interested in going to the Air Force Academy. Um, so I don't know if there was a person, um, maybe Luke Skywalker, if he had to pin on someone, but that seems pretty, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I could pin it on that. Um, but yeah, it was just the idea of wanting to fly in space that, uh, that drove me to the Air Force and then ultimately back to space. So I, I am taking my whole ring, and then, uh, as you know, I'm also taking uh, some material for future class rings up there to, to return that favor. Um, but yes, so I'll have uh, some of mine and, and some for some future uh, Academy graduates as well. <laughs> uh, that sounds like uh, <laughs> that sounds like a physics-based question, but yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> Uh, I think that yeah, all, all all shiners are just one degree removed. So yeah, I think they can definitely call themselves adjacent degrees uh, in space. There's definitely some uh, some pride amongst the shiners. Uh, so we always said the gold will shine, and the gold is indeed continuing to shine. So uh, proud to be a part of that legacy. Um, and uh, it's just been kind of uh, fascinating to, to look back at the Air Force Academy and all you know the recent changes with the Space Force and uh, the Academy has just really stepped right into that and providing you know leaders not just for our Air Force now but for our Space Force and uh, it's really really cool to be a part of that line and lineage um, and it's not just the military where grads make an impact it's really our nation and really across all sectors of industry you know nonprofits uh, you know there's people that are CFOs people that are starting charitable organizations it's pretty phenomenal when uh, when I look more at what they what they are doing or what they have, have done that's really what impresses me when I when I do interact with classmates yeah in terms of uh, knowing yeah I, I don't think they're gonna decide who for quite a for quite a while in terms of timeline uh, hopefully, actually, while we're on orbit, which is pretty cool, um, two big things will happen. One, the James Webb Telescope will, will launch, um, which is going to look back towards basically the, the beginning of the universe uh, in a spectrum we've never been able to look before. But your question was more Artemis, which uh, the Artemis 1 system is supposed to launch, hopefully, in early 22. So we are hoping to be able to see that, maybe be going over the Cape when that launches. But it is stacked in the vehicle assembly building as we speak. Um, they're getting ready to integrate the Orion module on top of that. And so that will be an uncrewed mission to basically test out the end-to-end, the -end, go around the moon, come back, um, and, and make sure the you know the re-entry and uh, system, which is you know the, the high velocity you need to get to the moon and back, check out that system. And then Artemis II um, is looking like uh, you know we'll follow that, and that'll be the crewed mission, but won't land on the moon. So that'll basically go again end-to-end, -end, but not use the lander. And to your question on when is it realistic that we'll go back to the moon? It, it really is more of a money issue than a technology issue. Like we, we have all the pieces except the lander, and obviously you need the lander to get boots on the moon. And right now, with that, uh, you know, at a much higher level than I, or <laughs> I deal with, that's uh, caught up with. Um, there was a protest and then litigation, and so really we're at a standstill until we get the authority to keep going with that until that is all sorted out in the courts. Um, but uh, technologically, we are. We, are, we can stay on timeline, we just need funding uh, and we need to be able to continue working. And really, the, my motivation, uh, I think early on, you know, joining the Air Force, uh, it was about the flying and then it became about the people, which it still always is. And then I think what really drove me to, you know, be interested in continuing to want to go to space and why I want to go to space now is just the science. And, you know, specifically science that can help here, people here on Earth. So whether that's you know, medical research or whether that's you know um, things that can help uh, with climate type technology so whether it's you know extraction of more water observation scrubbing uh, carbon dioxide all these kind of things are working on in space and have applications for us to go to the moon and the mars but really also have terrestrial applications and i think for me that's what i'm most excited about is um, there's 300 plus experiments that we're the we're the hands for scientists on the ground and it's their life's work you know each one of those 300 is is some PhD scientist's you know, passion, and we get the chance to gonna go make it happen physically for them and bring the results back. So um, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to.